All right, <coughs> Conservation Commission, March 24th, 2016, <coughs> convening at 7 p.m. Members present, Steve Barrett. Ben Byrne. <laughs> Louis Mission. Brian Danek. All right. We don't have a lot to do tonight um, on our old business. Have you guys been getting your project updates about uh, yeah. the solar project? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, the enforcement order that's still underway, the up on River Road. Um, the dock on the river, I'm going to make a motion that we open that hearing right now. And we have not gotten any comments back from National Heritage, and we can't sign off until we receive those comments. So I'm going to make a motion now that uh, we continue the meeting to our next scheduled meeting. So I'll, I'll second. second. Here we go. Aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay. Um, next thing we have up, we might as well do Pan Am Railroad. If you'd like to come on up. We have in front of us a request for determination that the boundaries of the resource areas depicted on the plans referenced are accu accurately delineated. <coughs> My name is Keith Morris, consultant for Pan Am Railways. Uh, every five years as part of their vegetation management plan, we are required by the uh, Department of Agricultural Resources to file determination of applicability for verification of the sensitive areas uh, strictly for the weed spray program. Uh, and if you're not familiar, basically, they treat the whole railway as a sensitive area. So we're basically, for this application, looking at the no spray zones as they pertain to wetlands. Mm -hmm. Anywhere a wetland, stream crossing, what have you, intersects within 10 feet of the ballast area of the rail, which is basically the, sp the spray pattern, that's a no spray zone. So you would have the tie would be yellow, and then the, as you come out of it and get weight more than 10 feet, there'd be another yellow tie in between as a no spray zone. So that's basically what the application is for. We have to do every five years. And then every year you also get a, uh, a letter regarding the yearly operational plan yep. where you can view it and comment on it. Uh, and the other thing for the last, so probably eight, nine years, I've actually ridden with the, uh, the applicator who applies the herbicides, railroad weed control out of Westfield, just to make sure these areas are located and not sprayed. I assume you'll be doing that again? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Yeah, we did not do recommend a site visit because it's such an extensive yep. uh, project. We have done, we have approved these in the past. Correct. And we've been very comfortable with the work that has been done. Yep. So, um, if you guys want to review the plans. Spade, there's two different lines, the Connecticut River line and then the uh, freight main line. It's about 12 miles of track, I believe, in Deerfield altogether. Take a look at their purpose. Just do a quick review of this. Yeah, no problem. And you may see certain areas, I'm not sure in Deerfield, where you see a stream crossing on the map, but it's not marked as no spray. And that's simply because there's more than 10 feet from the edge of the stone to where the culvert is. A lot of them are up high. Some areas there's double track and one track's been taken out. So that you get more, more than 10 feet on that side. So what's the limited spray zone? What does that entail? Limited outside of it, within 100 feet of the wetlands, 200 feet from a riverfront, you have to use herbicides that are approved by the Department of Agricultural Resources. Pan Am, as a way of saving money, treats the whole line as if it's within 100 feet or the buffer zone of resource area. So they spray everything with the uh, herbicides that are recommended for use. Outside of the 100 feet, technically you could use a stronger herbicide because you're further away from the sensitive areas, but they, uh, they don't do that at this point. They're using all the same, same uh, herbicide. Right. Yeah, it's basically a glyphosate. And like I said, you'll be getting a letter in a couple of weeks that'll state what, what we're spraying. <clears throat> uh, when we did this five years ago, Mark Stinson from uh, DEP 
recommended commissions issue, a, if they're fine with the, the markings, issue a positive two-way determination just for verification of the sensitive areas because there's no work proposed under this specific application. Then I tell commissions under the comment section to just put that it pertains only for the weed spray program, only because it's not an actual delineation in the field with blue flagging. It's just for the purpose of the weed spraying so the ties are painted just to cover yourselves. So you get gentlemen comfortable with yes. this as presented? Yeah. So the positive determination is 2A, the boundary delineations of the following resource areas described on the reference plans are confirmed as accurate. Therefore, the resource area boundaries confirmed in this delineation, excuse me, determination, are binding as to all decisions rendered pursuant to the Wetlands Protection Act and its regulations regarding such boundaries for as long as this determination is valid. So I'll make a motion that we go with the positive 2A. All second. Aye. 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 All right. Have all your pen. Sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you Can for coming in. Copy that in the mail or email? Yeah. Priscilla will get it out to you. Okay, great. Probably tomorrow or Monday. It goes to North Bell Rick, I don't see it, so. Thank um, you very much. Just quickly, it's just. You're, is, your, is your address in? On the uh, cover letter, my address and email address should be. Oh, okay. In. All right. I'll make sure I tell Priscilla. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care. Hey, we're on camera. <laughs> can't agree. Can't disagree. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. The other thing um, what we also have on here tonight, this is, like I said, this is not a, uh, a real big meeting this evening, which is nice. Mm -hmm. We have an emergency certification. What's, is this the railroad? No, it's this actually this one here. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. So what happened was over on Mill Village Road, just south of old deer field by the soccer fields the there is a it's actually the state actually referred to it as a bridge it was much more so like a two foot by one and a half foot culvert but because it was square the state referred to it it collapsed and the water was backing up over onto five and ten causing some severe hazards. What worked out well is Kevin Scarborough called me, and I called Mark Stinson. Mark was on his way up north here anyway, so he stopped by, looked at it, and gave us direction as to where we should go with it. And so they put in, they're going to have to replace the culvert per se. Water's passed. They ran two six-inch PVC pipes through what the, where it had collapsed to be able to keep the stream moving. Yeah. And then they put in a, I think, three-foot, kind of like a spillway that Mark had suggested that they put in. So I signed off on the first uh, for the emergency certification, and they will be at some point bringing forward to us a notice of intent to town will. So I just wanted to bring you guys up to date with it, and uh, it really was, I mean, the water was this far from coming over and closing Mill Village Road, and 5 and 10 was already turning into a flood. Yeah. So made an executive decision, which I was comfortable with. I did. Yeah. Thank you. So you guys can sign it too. And <laughs> you can take the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to date this one too? 
What's that? Do we need to date this? Yeah, probably. And we have also in front of us a request for comments. It was submitted to us to, it's an appeal of a decision of the building commission to allow the use of a common driveway. We have nothing in front of us as far as a request for determination of applicability. Um, <clears throat> so I, would pull a page out of my Ben Byrne book of the official comment is no comment because we have nothing to rule on. We have nothing, no decision to make. Um, so I'm going to make a motion that we have no comment on this motion request for comment. This is on the Keats Road. Road. Keats Road. Yeah, for a common driveway. I, no. Frankly, I don't know why it came to us. So, no comment. All right. We have minutes for review from our February meeting. So I assume we're continuing the uh, enforcement order again? Yes. So I would make a motion that we do continue that enforcement order. No second. Aye. 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 Okay. In the mail. If you're interested. We did it except the meet uh, last month's meeting minutes minutes make a motion to accept the minutes as presented second aye 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 then we've got a cutting plan here They run this thing over a few times before we got it, or what's that? They run this thing over a few times before they got it here. It would it would seem so. It's like the dog ate my homework. <clears throat> Machines at the post office are pretty tough.
Oh, it's Dan Rosenberg. There's a couple of other things if you want to give them a quick perusal. Tell you, Lou. Uh, I'm curious on who's in charge right now, but he used to work there. Well, but. So if anybody would like to go and represent us at this said meeting, feel. That was an addressing letter from the D Department of Environmental Protection to clean, get that debris out of the, the river. Not so much debris is just the leftovers of the bridge. Yeah. So, if we are good with the mail, I would. Twenty eighth. So I'll make a motion. We. I won't be able to. I probably won't be there. You going down south? That. Going down Carolinas? Yeah. Nice. So, April twenty eighth, next meeting. Sounds good. And then I will make a motion once that's all set that we adjourn. Motion so made. All second. Aye. Aye. Aye.